Hi everyone, today I will showcase a privilege escalation in Azure where we get foodled into an account that has application administrative access where this user is able to manage applications that are configured in the tenant. However, if within the tenant an application has higher privileges than the actual user has, but the user has access to edit the application, it can grant itself higher permissions, for example, global administrative privileges. Um, what I'm going to showcase is the attack from start to end. So gaining access to the system using, for example, Metasploit, bypassing antivirus and stuff like that, then getting access to the account only using tokens. So we don't have the username, password or MFA. We just steal the token from the device that is already logged in with single sign on. And from there, we will try to exploit this vulnerability to get global administrative commands. So let me take you in this scenario. Here we have the uh, actual Windows machine that's the victim, which has antivirus on and will probably open your, uh, for example, uh, phishing mail with Word or Excel, opens a macro and executes a command. For now, as this is a demonstration video, I will execute the command myself and we will get a shell. So from within the shell, we probably want to do and upload a tool that is called road token .exe, and we want to upload it to, for example, users, public, and then for, for instance, say rt.exe. When we upload the file, we can actually call this and what we need to get access to the user's token is the following. We will start road recon auth prt init and that will generate a nonce which we can use with the actual tool. We call it rt. So I will use this command to see if we can get a access token. If you want to learn more on how this works, Derek Jan has a very good explanation on his blog, but for now we just move on. So with this access token, we can actually use that within road recon. So we do auth prt cookie. I put it in between here to actually get a road tools .auth file, which is actually the access token where we can access the Microsoft graph from this user account. With RoadTX, we can des describe the token and this will decode it and show it on screen. And what it looks like, we have access to an account that is called Blake Shelton. And we are in the tenant that is called wicketticket.microsoft.com. So most of the time when I want to enumerate a domain more, we use a tool like Bloodhound. So let's try if and see if we can run Bloodhound this way by using list tenant and then we use wicked ticket the domain dot on microsoft.com and we will say output output json however we need a token and if we would like to use the token that we received this is probably not going to work and i will tell you why as you can see, error, the client says invalid token audience. If we would enable debugging, let's see on how to do that. That's minus V and then two. We can actually see it's trying to get access to one of those target URLs. And my token is made for the graph.microsoft.net, for instance, but not to the right target URL graph.microsoft.com. So to actually get a token that is capable of running Bloodhound, we can use RoadTX and we can say get tokens and we can do it for the MS graph and then we can say purity in it again. So again, get a nonce and with this nonce, getting a token that actually works for Bloodhound. So like this, we can rerun it here and we again have a PRT cookie which we can use to get a token. So row TX, PRT cookie, 
lets me first remove the token. So PRC cookie, put that in between. And now we actually have a token. And this token can be used for Bloodhound to enumerate a bit more on what user account we actually have access to. And as you can see, this works. We have a JSON output file now with all the information required. And what we can do now is start up the Bloodhound Community Edition. Back in the day, you needed to install a Neo4g database and stuff like that. But now with the new Bloodhound Community Edition, you can actually run a Docker command. If we now try to log in, it will ask us to set a new password. We will do this. And while the new password is set, it says no data available. Obviously, we already did manage to get some data, so we will upload it in here. And if it's completing with the upload, we can actually run some queries on what user we have and what access it has to the tenant. Complete, so if we now go to explore and we search for the user, there it is. And if we click on it, we can see, hey, this user is actually an application administrator, as I told before. And this is pretty interesting because this could give us access to a higher role if there is an application which has higher privileges than that Blake has. How can you find this? Well, one way to do it is by using pathfinding in Bloodhound. And what we are going to say is, hey, we have compromised a user that's called Blake Shelton, and we actually want to achieve to get the global administrator role. What is the route to get there? And then it actually gives us some information here in Bloodhound which will show us that there is actually a path to achieve this. Why? Blake Shelton is an application administrator, as we can see in here, which has the possibility to add secrets to ap certain applications. The Vuln application has a user running the application, a service principle, which is also called Vuln app. And this service principle has the uh, very high privileges, which makes it able to add roles to the tenant, which obviously contains the global administrator role. So this means by abusing this user account, we could upgrade ourselves to a global administrator because we have access to an application um, and this application has higher privileges than the user itself. So how will this look? Well, first we would initiate a new flow with Rorican so PRT in it again, which will give us the nonce and which we will run again to get access to the graph API or from Rodrigan. So PRT in it, so PRT cookie, and then we use this token first. Yes, and then cat the tokens and use this as the access token instead of the cookie itself. And now we can actually get all the users. So in there, we only have two users, but we know we have access to the system. So now we're actually ready to exploit. We have all the information we need and we can actually exploit it. So what is the first thing we are going to do? For example, see if we get the object ID for the application, Vuln app, which we are going to abuse. And we can abuse this by using a command. And this command will add a secret to the application. And by adding this secret, this new secret to that application, we will be able to log in as the service principle for that application. So let's see if we can add it. Yes, we did add it and it will be listed in secret. So we can show the value as well. If it is successful, there we go. And then we could disconnect from Azure and we could use some commands to set up our attack. To start off with, we need the application ID, which is the following. This is the application ID we need because we want to abuse that application. Then we need the tenant ID again, 
which are already filled in above, so we can reuse that. It's in here. Okay, that's not very visible, so let me get that from here. Standard ID. There we go. Then we need the password. Convert it. And then we say we need to make a new object of it. And then we can connect as the service principal to the tenant. There we go. And now we're in the Azure cloud. Now we need to run another command to actually get an access token to the graph API. And now we can connect using that token. And there we go. We have an access token now for the service principal of that account. So if you could go back to Azure, we're actually not Blake Shell anymore. No, we did add a secret to the app, which runs as this service principal. And now we're actually the service principal. So the last step we need to take is we need to use the privileges it has to give ourselves the global administrator role. So how are we going to do that? Well, first we need to see what the object ID is of the global administrator role. And that we can do that simply with using the Azure AD directory role uh, command. Then we need the object ID for the user that we have. So that is running uh, the user again here we go we need to have we have Blake Shelton and then we can actually just run a command by using the following command here we refer to the user we want to give the privileges that's Blake and here we have the object ID and this is the ID on what role we want to give Blake and that is obviously the object ID of global administrator by doing this it's probably successful, no errors are shown. And now we can actually say, for example, get Azure AD directory role member instead of add. And then we do object ID to see if it actually was successful. If we now have global administrative rights. And yes, there we go. Blake Shelton now is part of the global administrator group and actually has owned the domain by abusing the application. I can also show you this on screen using a management portal view. Let me show you. If you now go to users, we have the two users we had before. If we now go to Blake and we go to assigned roles, the assigned role is now global admin. And this is or was a video to showcase how easy it can be and how dangerous it just is um, exploiting this this way and that you really need to look into your applications what rights people have to actually use the applications or gain more privileges than they should but also a quick reminder that not only um, having a username or password is the only way to log into for example all those applications the graph and stuff like that you see that taking over the system is as important as stealing someone's credentials. As the tokens that are in on there that are used for single sign-on are on the system. So be aware of that. Thank you for watching and I uh, see you guys next time.